So you're claiming that your trip to Paris left you with a newfound obsession for Chanel? Uh, yeah. Hey everybody, I know it has been a long time since I posted new content and I am back. But honestly, I had to find my passion again between COVID and some really fabulous travels to Europe, including, yes, Paris. I just wasn't really feeling it anymore. And I just had a good long conversation with myself and I decided, okay, some Chanel makeup might get me in the mood for doing this again. Hey, I'm Chris, I'm 54, and the whole reason I'm here is that I invest my time and money so you don't have to waste yours. I got a bunch of Chanel makeup at Ulta. This is the final look. If you want to see how I did this, keep watching. Let's start with cheeks. And this product is a cream product that's actually supposed to be cheek and lips. I'm going to do it for cheek today. There's what that looks like. And I have used this before. It shears out so nicely. I also know that when I'm tapping this blush on or rubbing it in, that that is making my cheeks flush. So I know that it's gonna calm down a little bit less red than it is right now. And also when I put a finishing powder over it, it will tamp it down a little bit. Next, we're moving on to eyes. And honestly, a lot of the quads did not appeal to me. They, um, like they were pretty colors, don't get me wrong, gorgeous colors but I want to be able to do a full look out of a quad and a lot of them didn't have a light enough color for what I was looking for. So this is a very neutral palette. It is the one that has some shimmer to it. There is another neutral that's all mattes. And while there are names on the back, what it says is medium, medium, light, dark. So I am gonna go into the medium that doesn't have as much sparkle on it. And I am not surprised at all that picking up even what felt like a very minimal amount has laid down a beautiful amount of pigment and also blended so nicely. I'm going with my finger on that other medium shade. working the outer two thirds of my lid, trying to concentrate like my first application on the outside and then working it in. Now with the lightest shade on my pinky, and I'm gonna pick up just a little bit more of that shimmery medium, just to build a nice gradient. Now my Morphe 432 brush going into that darkest color to do under my lower lash line. Only about two thirds of the way across and a little wedge shape on my upper lash line at the outer corner. I think these are so pretty, such a beautiful, cool, neutral. Mm. You know what? This is just a great go-to everyday and travel palette as far as I'm concerned. I was looking for an eyeliner that would really make the green in my eyes pop. And when I was swatching the eyeliners at Ulta, they were like butter. So I have high hopes that these are gonna be great for tight lining. I got the shade Cassis, which is a deep purpley brown. Just a minute while I do this eye. I am giving this eyeliner a B plus. It might improve to like an A minus. I did feel like I had to really work it to get it to go on my tight line. And honestly, that CoverGirl 24 Hour Exhibitionist is still the bomb. That is still my holy grail. The Chanel does not perform nearly as well as that does. That goes on like a dream. 
This, like I said, I had to work it a little bit, um, but when I went to clean off where I swatched it on the back of my hand, I really had to scrub. So I believe now that I've gotten it on my tight line, it is gonna last all day. When I first started watching makeup on YouTube and you know it was Angie Hot and Flashy, I bought Chanel mascara and I loved that mascara. That was such a big splurge for me. So I wanted to give it a try again. This is not that mascara from five years ago. This is the Le Volume de Chanel, not the waterproof one, the regular one. They have a newer one that is Le Volume Stretch, but my Ulta said they hadn't had that in months. So I figured I'd try this. Interesting brush on the wand. It looks like it's almost a spiral. I am really curious to see how this goes on. Oh yeah, that gives me hella long lashes. I am not complaining about that. Wow, and that is just one coat. Okay, I can tell that my lashes would have benefited from being curled first with this mascara. I'm just checking my mirror right here. But this mascara did give them a little curl on its own, which is what I really appreciate. I, I really like a mascara that I don't have to curl my lashes for. Yeah, and I feel like I'm getting the green in my eyes to pop a little bit. Last is some lipstick. This is the Rouge Allure Luminous Intense Lip Color. And I, I tell you, I showed you at the beginning that it was so strange that they had so many tester things blank, and they did have testers for this. Um, but the woman who was working wasn't the Chanel rep, like sometimes there's a Chanel rep working. And so she didn't want to let me swatch even the back of my hand with these testers because they were brand new. So I just kind of had to take my chances, and um, I know that this is refillable, and it's a little weird to me because it, oh, you can stow it. Isn't that beautiful? And then press it to pop it out. Okay, that's cool. And here is the shade I got. This is shade uh, 212. What a beautiful color for fall. A little rust, a little orange, not too dark, little hints of the 90s lip that seems to be so very current right now. Mm. Mm. And mm. it feels, it's this, it's this weird combination of it. It feels really moisturizing, but also like it's gonna have lasting power like a matte. I'm gonna be really curious to see how this wears. Here I am with some finishing powder and setting spray, hair done. I don't usually do this, but I'm gonna come back for an eight hour check-in tonight and let you know how this all wears. Okay, so real quick, while I'm at a stoplight, I have had a meal, I've had another glass of water. This lipstick is going nowhere, but it is starting to feel very dry, like a matte lipstick, but it was not supposed to be a matte lipstick. So um, thumbs up on it not going where, but because I'm a lip gloss girl, I am not used to feeling this dry. Like I said, I don't usually do check-ins on kind of full face makeup, but since this is Chanel, I thought, hey, let's just see how this stuff wears. I will say, I think the blush, still going strong, still looking good. The lips, as I mentioned, um, it's weird, it's not a liquid lipstick, it's not a matte lipstick, but oh my gosh, it got dry. Having said that, it did last through a meal with a beverage and then another glass of water didn't budge at all. It didn't really move until I couldn't take it anymore. I put some clear gloss over the top and then it came off. So, um, if you're looking for something that just needs to feel good and not go anywhere for a few hours 
and like won't transfer onto glasses and stuff. I think that stuff is really good if you want something all day. Uh, for me, yeah, it just got too dry. This eyeshadow, okay, it still looks good, but when I close my eyes, you can see that it has collected in the crease. And I did prime my eyelids with MAC Paint Pot, which is what I always use. So that's, uh, that's a big disappointment, actually. I have tons of eyeshadow, expensive, cheap, drugstore, high-end, whatever, that will last me uh, you know, eight, nine hours. So the Chanel doesn't, that is disappointing. And what else? Oh, the mascara, the mascara still going strong. Lashes look great. Despite the fact that uh, my eyes were tearing a bit today, we were very heavy um, smoke from the forest fires in Seattle today. And I was out with some friends doing wine tasting and it irritated my eyes a bit. So they watered a bit, but even with the watery eyes, I'm looking, checking in my mirror here, the mascara still looks fantastic. So overall, um, yeah. Uh, would I rebuy this stuff? I don't know. I mean, I like, I like the blush. Um, and like I said before, it can also be a lip color and it's a really, really pretty shade. And, oh, I should, let me check the tight lining. All right, there's a little bit of the tight lining left on this eye, almost none left on this eye. So I'm gonna score that a disappointment. I'll stick with the CoverGirl eyeliner. So there you go. If you enjoyed this video, if you like high-end bougie makeup, you were probably gonna really like my review of the most expensive foundation I've ever owned, the La Mer, right here. And for a playlist of all my get ready with me's is right here. Thanks so much.